Another day, another recap. Today we'll be diving into an action thriller movie titled Renegades. Enjoy the recap. The movie opens in Paris at the year 1944 during which the Nazis had control over Paris. The soldiers there pack everything up from expensive paintings to gold bars. The convoy with all the precious belongings are escorted to Grahavo, Yugoslavia. The Germans then begin raiding the houses and forcing all the townsfolk to one spot. A mother helps her son escape as the Germans make her join the others. That night the Nazis begin taking down all the precious belongings while men on the outskirts of the city are about to press down a lever. The scene cuts to 1995 in Sarajevo, Bosnia. A red minivan pulls up to a military base and hands over some papers. But it is shoved back in their face and the duo which are named as Stanton Baker and Kurt Duffy are placed on their knees. They are then ordered to remove their clothes and General Petrovic approaches and tells them to get dressed. The general allows the two men from the press to conduct an interview with a general. Simultaneously, a Navy SEAL team appears close to the base. The armed troops climb up some stairs and while Matt Barnes keeps a lookout, Jack Porter uses his expertise to rip open a metal door. While the other two set up the camera and the microphone levels, the three Navy SEALs walk around the base until they reach a point and place some explosives. Upstairs, Kurt interrupts the general from speaking and says he needs to fix the sound. Stanton tells him all clear, and the duo attack and kill all the men around them but only knock the general out. The explosives are then detonated, and this causes an opening in the ground where the five men carry the general's body away in a bag. Petrovic and his men arrive to see what has happened. The Navy SEALs then exit the same way they came in, and spot enemy troops in the distance. They all open fire at each other, and the enemies are all quickly killed. But as more approach, an RPG is fired which destroys the staircase. The team are forced to go back inside the base and come up with a new plan. They hijack an enemy tank and accelerate through the base and call in a support team. They need to modify their plan and an RPG is fired at them but does nothing. They return fire with the tank and blow up their pursuers, however many more men join the chase and one even jumps onto the tank. He is quickly taken care of though, and their higher-ups say they cannot change extraction as it is restricted airspace. Problematically another tank joins the fight, but they smartly dodge it and run over whatever they can. Jack blows up a control tower which comes crashing down to put a gap between them and the tank. As they approach the last bridge however, Petrovic is waiting for them, and within seconds the Navy SEALs are completely surrounded. With nowhere to go, the team immediately fires at the bridge. The group decides they want to go for a swim and as the tank sinks and is filled with water, the troops outside fire continuously until they finally stop. The Navy SEALs use this time to put on masks and start swimming through the water. They kill some troops on a rowboat up ahead and hijack their boat. The Navy SEALs then speed off and have completed their mission. By nighttime, they reach the base of operations where they are greeted by Rear Admiral Levin. Without saying a single word, he storms off and takes his five Navy SEALs to his room to lecture them, making them understand that they have caused a massive storm and that using a tank to run over half the military base instead of the stealth mission like planned has caused even his higher-ups to be put on edge. He gives the soldiers three days leave while he decides what he will do to them. That night Stanton rushes over to his partner's house, Lara. Problematically though, three goons randomly come into the house and ask for an item. Stanton comes out and immediately smacks out the assailants when suddenly a gun is aimed at his head. Lara then tells the man that it's not here and she'll take him to it. On their way, Matt sees that Stanton is being forcibly taken and so he intervenes and knocks out all the assailants. Lara explains that the man knocked out is her brother and his goons. Matt tells Stanton to sort out whatever the problem is and leaves him be. Back inside, Lara shows Stanton a 24 kg 99.99% gold bullion. The next morning she goes to explain the long story on how she has the gold, and with scuba gear, both she and Stanton go underwater. Taking him around, Stanton gets to see a society buried underneath the water. But he quickly realizes that something is very odd. He goes inside one of the buildings and Lara explains to us that this was her grandfather's story. One that haunted him for his life. Back in 1944 when the Germans rounded up the entire village, the young boy whose mother helped him escape was her grandfather. He stole one of the gold bouillons from the Germans but was spotted. He immediately ran for dear life and on his way, he buried the gold bar and then continued running. Out of nowhere, he hears the Nazis open fire on all of the townspeople and kill them, as he is suddenly grabbed by an armed militia who say to follow him. The man there alongside other soldiers get the boy to pull down a lever which blows up a dam. The water then comes crashing into the village, killing all the Nazis there and burying the town underwater. Lara mentions how her grandfather would always tell the tale and never forgot his home. She then tells Stanton she wants to find the rest of the gold and help all her people. Stanton immediately takes this information to his team and asks them if they'd be willing to find the bars underwater. Ben estimates there is about $300 million there, but problematically it is in enemy territory. Lara gives them the rundown on how the villages around them have been plundered and killed. Lara offers the men 50-50, half for them, and half for her people. The team then go their own way and discuss the pros and cons of taking on an unauthorized mission that could land their careers and themselves in danger. Stanton then goes to Lara and tells her that they are in. 
In the meantime though, Petrovic finds his men dead and wants to locate the position of the Navy SEALs. The Navy SEALs meanwhile plan how they want to get into the bank vault, and come to the conclusion they will need about five days with rotations amongst them to break the vault. The next part of the plan is working out a way to carry out 2,000 gold bars. Matt and his team then head to base and lie to one of the men there to say they are carrying out a top-secret mission and need one of the trucks. They then go from base to base, lying and cheating to get all the supplies they would need. Once nighttime approaches, Matt and Lara get to the drop point. But out of nowhere, they hear men speaking and quickly hide. Enemy troops patrolling the area stop and search nearby. Matt holds his gun at the ready, but the enemy troops are called back to base. Once they finish what they need to do, Lara returns home only to discover the gold is missing. The next day, Ben calculates the gold's weight to be about 27 tons. He recommends using a cargo net and wants to use some parachutes to help raise it to the surface. Jack says he'll take over from there and gets two of his friends in on the plan and offers them a million dollars worth of gold if they'll haul 27 tons at an agreed-upon time and they both gladly accept. Just then, an enemy fighter jet appears and shoots a missile at the helicopter. After dodging it and then some more, they return fire and manage to shoot down the enemy fighter jet. But here comes a massive problem to the group's entire plan. Petrovic finds Lara's brother in the possession of a gold bullion and interrogates him on where he found it. The Navy SEAL team in the meantime have been called in by Levin. In the office, Levin tells the SEAL team that his higher-ups were actually in awe about the team and their heroics. But at the same time, it has come to light that a team of Serbian headhunters are actively searching to kill them all. Joint Command has come to the agreement to redeploy the team as far away from the mess as possible. Levin says they'll be taking off in 36 hours and are remanded to the base. Matt tells his men that they can no longer go ahead with the mission and wants them to get ready to leave. Stanton isn't too happy with the whole outcome, but Matt tells him he needs to leave everything behind including Lara. Later that night, Jack and Kirk decide to just do as they please since they are leaving the next day and get into a fight. After knocking out a couple SAS boys, they return to Ben and Matt who laugh at them. Ben then gets an idea telling his team it'll take a week to get into the vault, as they can only do one-hour dives. But if there is an airtight area they can pump air into they can get it done. They alert Stanton to get ready and Jack goes to the pilots to tell them they'll be needed at sunrise. Jack then spots a plane refueling and his team lie about a covert operation and convince the pilots to join their mission. They immediately get airborne and when they arrive at their destination the SEAL team jump out of the plane and into the water below. Once they reach the abandoned city they rip open their container and start making an air pocket where they can work out of. They eventually manage to do it and it seems to be working quite well. They then move on to their next step. In the meantime though, Petrovic breaks into Lara's house. He goes through her cupboard and discovers where she is. The SEAL team continue with their plan and start to break open the vault. While it does take some time and effort with everyone rotating shifts, the air they are pumping into the air pocket is quickly beginning to dissipate and they don't have much time. Levin meanwhile goes looking for his seals and notices that they're missing. Petrovic on the other hand is on the highlighted area of Lara's map and looking for the Navy seals. The team meanwhile have roughly two hours of air left and need some more time to dig their way into the vault. Smartly enough Levin brings in the two pilots from earlier and wants to know where his Navy seals are. They act dumbfounded and Levin prepares one of the pilots to be discharged. This time the pilot thinks twice about keeping silent on the secret operation. Stanton in the meantime is left with Lara while the rest go to dig. He tells her that Matt's wife was in a car accident a couple years ago and he lost his daughter to it, hence why he is so hardcore at times. Finally the team manage to break into the vault and discover that all the boxes inside are filled with currency. They discover a couple of gold bouillons laying around but immediately realize the mission was a waste of time. Jack tells off Lara and as Matt shuts him up, Kirk tells them that there were still 10 bars worth about 1.5 million and that they should be happy. Jack then radios the pilots for immediate extract. The team then go to grab the gold bars from the vault but Matt discovers a wall with some Latin words on it. He tells the team what he found and they immediately break down the wall. Once inside they open up some crates to discover priceless paintings. They open up another crate with a Nazi insignia, and it is then that they discover over 2,000 gold bouillons. They quickly get to work and start loading the gold on a net. But above them, Petrovic spots currency on the water and knows for a fact that the Americans are underground. His team chuck on their gear and dive into the water as the seals finish placing the gold on the net. Problematically, one of the enemies attacks but he is quickly stopped. A fight breaks out and the assailant is killed. Another one joins the fight but he too is killed quite easily. But when a third militant joins the fray, they kill him and activate his parachute which takes him up to surface level for Petrovic to see. With limited time the SEALs carry on with their mission. But here comes another problem. Petrovic drops multiple grenades in the water which explode. They go to do another round and the SEALs finish up and realize the gold is too heavy to lift to the ground. More explosives activate which causes a ripple in the water and also destroys the bank beside them. They push the gold away and converge in the air bubble. They come to the realization they will need more air to lift the gold to the ground and Matt says there is a few tanks left and goes to get it. With little oxygen in his tank it quickly runs out and he swims until he gets the tank. 
Petrovic then releases more grenades in the water which destroys the building around Matt and just barely misses him. Matt goes back to the air pocket and releases the air which causes them and the gold to go upwards and eventually reach the surface. They pop their heads out of the water when Petrovic sees them and grabs an RPG. As he is about to shoot a fighter plane blows up the boat beside him. Immediately after that, Petrovic and his boat are also blown to pieces and the mission is a big success. The plane then drops a hook which is connected to the gold and lifted off the ground alongside the Navy SEALs. And after a long night they all fly back to base. Levin greets them immediately and says he saved their lives, he demands an explanation and storms off swearing at the top of his lungs. Inside the office he cannot believe the stunt they just pulled off and Stanton explains they wanted to give it to the people of Bosnia, while Levin understands he says he could spin the tale as an operation to kill Petrovic. Immediately after, Levin grabs diplomats from France and takes the stage to congratulate the Navy SEALs for returning $150 million worth of gold to the French government. The Prime Minister of France then awards Lara with a Legion of Honor. Back in his office Levin tells the SEALs it's their lucky day. He explains his filthy rich brother-in-law was able to unload the other $150 million of gold and distributes the shares of the profits to his team. But weirdly enough they only get about $4,000 each. Levin instead gives the $150 million all to Lara to help the people of Bosnia. The rest of the troops see what has occurred and are happy with the outcome. They are that happy they all give their checks to Lara one by one. Levin is proud to see his troops have this much valor and selflessness and almost sheds a tear. That's the end. If you enjoyed this recap, drop a like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.